Hello and welcome back to KSP POV, where we play Kerbal Space Program in first person. In the last episode, we designed uh, the new space station, our very first space station in this series. And it's going to be a two-parter, one for Kerbin and one for the MUN. And so that will satisfy two contracts, which will be great. But the problem is, is that it is a $1.9 million uh, launch for all the pieces involved. So we are going to need to make some money fast. Like any good space agency that needs to make money fast, what better way than tourism? So we're going to come in here and we're going to take every single contract that is related to flybys of either the Mun or Minmus, or both, because some of them are multi-moon tours. So we're going to grab all of these and hopefully that should be enough to fund our space station. So let's go ahead into the build and first off we're going to be using the Alcor pod because we like we like using that and as you will see here as you might know from previous episodes it doesn't like to re-enter the atmosphere very well but because we have these jumbo Kerbal cans underneath it should be fairly protective upon re-entry so we go ahead and just put a little heat shield on there we don't have to worry too much so all this needs to do is be able to support uh, 23 Kerbals. Uh, we're gonna have uh, all 20 Kerbals plus a scientist and an engineer just just in case uh, anything goes wrong as well as our pilot of course. Um, and other than that it's just gonna be floating around through space. We're going to first go to Minmus uh, because the inclination change is gonna be the biggest thing and then we're on the way back we're gonna hit the Mun and then hopefully we'll have enough Delta V to bring us ourselves home and hopefully those parachutes uh, will do what they need to do. We used the stage recovery mod uh, and we got the go ahead that everything is green so those parachutes should be enough but it's always uh, it's always anybody's guess on how things are going to go. I did use tweak scale here and I, I tweaked the scale up just because it felt weird having this super thin rocket with the super big uh, top here, but we've been utilizing the extra large uh, cryo tanks for long enough that I feel that slightly shi a slight shift in size isn't too bad. So first off, I just grab all the tourists and I start putting them in there, but then I realize uh, we have a contract for a space camp, and so some of these tourists are actually meant to, to go to space camp, so we can't include any of those on this mission because this isn't the space camp bus. That bus will actually be going and spending time at the, the newly built space station that we are trying to fund here. So now I'm just going through and just finding all the Kerbals, their itineraries, and, and putting them uh, in the appropriate positions. There we go, it's a very tall rocket. We don't really do much for the action groups, just basically to control the solar panels. Uh, we don't have any radiators on here, so we don't need to worry about that. We put a couple cameras on there because this is POV, so we'd like to have some sort of view of what's going on. And we go ahead and throw some science on there. Uh, I don't think we're gonna collect anything, but it, you know, I figured it's worth a shot. We're flying by both, both moons. So after a quick test, we realized that uh, more boosters is always a good option. And so we threw on a little extra. Our thrust to weight ratio was above one, but just barely. And so it was it was a, a real hard time trying to get this thing off the ground. So figured more boosters never hurt anybody, right? So here we are on the launch pad and we are gonna get ready. So once again, we're back in the Alcor pod. This is uh, provided by the mod of the same name. And there's a bunch of different mods that will be in play here. Uh, Vessel Viewer is one. Um, Astrogator is another that we end up using. MechJeb. Uh, for a list of all the mods that we're using, uh, as per usual, it's going to be in the Google Doc listed in the description below. There we go. We got our setup, and there was actually an update 
since uh, the last time we played, and we can now do science from inside the castle. We don't have to have him on action groups, and that's why we didn't take any of our science experiments and put them on action groups, because we're gonna we're gonna use this new feature now. A little bit of lightning, preempt our flight. There we go. We are taking off slowly, but we are taking off. Is, uh, quite a harrowing journey just trying to lift off into the atmosphere wasn't even sure if we were going to make it it's a chance we could have ended up just tipping over uh, way too early losing control and then having a real bad problem because there's a lot of Kerbals on board a lot of tourists that spent good money to not be killed so I think we owe it to them for that so here we are looking at the vessel view we're changing around the position of it so that we, we can see the tanks that are going to empty first. We'll be able to have a visual on how much fuel is left in them and then we can see when they're empty and then we can stage them appropriately. And we're going to be skipping through some parts of this, uh, you know, getting to orbit is something that we've done many times before, even in uh, POV. So we are going to be skipping some of this, but we haven't had Black Rack's volumetric clouds for very long, and we haven't done too many uh, ascents through the clouds. So we're gonna we're gonna pay attention to this first little bit because I found it quite enjoyable. I love this mod. I highly recommend it. I think uh, the creator did a wonderful job and is doing a wonderful job keeping everybody updated and communicating with with uh, players who use this mod so can't sing its praises any higher so now we're coming up to the cloud layer we're starting to tip over a little bit because we're at 110 meters per second our thrust to weight ratio is 1.5 not not great not ideal for uh, for the most efficient takeoff, but it's doing it. That's all that matters. So as you can see through the window here, we are now rising above, or through, I should say, the cloud layer. And then in a moment, we will pierce through to the top. <sighs> Look at that. I was worried that in KSP POV, the volumetric clouds wouldn't really come through like they did in Escaping Kerbin. But I was quite happy to see that even while looking through the windows, even while looking through the cameras, uh, they still held the same beauty. So as you can see on the vessel view, where side boosters are almost run out. And we will be staging them shortly. I'm thinking I might do a tutorial video on the Alcor pod. I think maybe even a tutorial video on, sev on some of the other IVA um, extensions for these pods just to kind of show what each thing is and what to do with them and kind of how to utilize them. And there we go, we have a clean separation. And now we're switching our vessel view to once again be able to see the fuel amount in our side boosters it's been a while it's been a, it's been quite a bit since we've uh, played KSP POV 
All right, so here we are approaching our apoapsis. Like I said before, I'm gonna skip through some of the stuff. Um, just a long ascent through the atmosphere to get up to here isn't necessarily the most interesting thing, and we've got a lot going on today. We've got two moons to fly by. So we wanna just get started. So now our altitude is about 94, 95 kilometers. And uh, we are going to be circularizing soon. We have our burn stent. You can see that it's going to cost 637 delta V. It's going to take approximately one minute. And we're still on our lower stage, so we don't have anything to worry about as far as not having enough thrust to uh, circularize or um, using too much of our transfer stage to circularize. We actually over-engineered this rocket, and it was be it was precisely because we had a low thrust to weight at the beginning that we decided to throw on the extra boosters, and we uh, asparagus staged them, um, and so in doing so, we f further increased the amount of delta V we had in our lower stages. Therefore, we have uh, a lot more fuel. We're actually going to be utilizing not even half of what we needed to uh, we're going to be wasting some of the fuel just because we uh, had such a, a great ascent I would say it's not that our ascent was great it was just that we had no such problems with uh, a lack of fuel and each of our lower stages have explosives on it the tank explosives uh, from the mod of the same name and uh, so our lower stages are not going to be re-entering the atmosphere, but thankfully they're also not going to become space debris either. Trying to be a very responsible space agency. I'm very excited for the upcoming episodes of this. It may take a little while to, to come out just because there are so many mods in this save file that I have that it takes takes a little while to get each thing done. Each episode takes a lot to record and get to all the pieces uh, to put together. And so we may not update KSP. We may not do as much Kerbal videos as often, but um, we're not going to be abandoning them. That's for sure. So now we're using Astrogator to kind of plot in a course for Minmus. I'm still fairly new with using Astrogator, so I'm hesitant to uh, to fully rely on it, but I definitely wanted to try it more in this mission. So now what we're doing is we are just going to change our inclination. You can tell that change by the line that I'm circling right now, the R dot ink, and that is uh, slowly dropping. And once that hits zero, then we will be on the same inclined plane as Minmus. And there we go. We are ready to go. But of course, first things first, we have to look at our contracts because we have uh, one of the contracts, the tourists just want to be in orbit. So they just wanted to be in orbit for an hour or so. Um, and they're ready to come home, but they will be sorely mistaken because we have a long trip to go now. <laughs> so, a couple weeks, a couple week long trip. If uh, so, those tourists definitely got more than they bargained for. Well, that's okay. So I accidentally overtime warped and missed my node, but it's not too big of a deal. Uh, we're just going to burn for it anyways. Uh, and just try to fix it as we go along. Like I said, we still have our lower engine right now, so this is extra fuel, stuff that we didn't, we weren't expecting to have, so that's good. Hey, 
And I apologize about the jerkiness of the screen. I uh, forgot to turn down the vibration setting. Uh, what was it? The motion, motion setting. I forgot to turn that down, but I will fix that by the next one. Can, it can move around a little bit, but this is a little this is a little much. And there we go. We overshot just a little bit, so we're just gonna flip ourselves around and uh, adjust accordingly. And it took a bit to flip this thing around. This is a very large craft. Now we're looking at the closest approach where my mouse is pointing and that'll tell us and we accidentally overshoot that as well. Because we're supposed to be within, or we're supposed to be below 30 kilometers for min mess. So we're just pumping the gas just ever so slightly. And there we go, 27 kilometers. So we just uh, wave goodbye to Kerbin. We go along our way. So it's a pretty weird orbit that it's going to send us in once we pass by. But that's okay because getting to the Mun isn't too hard. Once you're once you're already coming back from Min Miss, you can you can really hit the Mun by accident half the time. So we're uh, time warping, but we're still trying to be very careful. Um, since this is a precarious mission and so many of them, so many of those contracts are in our, in our palms right now. Gotta be sure not to time warp past where we go. I've done it before where I've time warped as I was approaching the, the target and I warped right on by it and the contract did not complete because I went by it too fast that the game just didn't even register that I was at the appropriate altitude. I'm just keeping an eye on my contracts as we get close. I try flipping my craft around to, to get my camera on the to, pointed towards Minmus, but for some reason it just doesn't it doesn't show up. So here we are. We're going to do our first set of science by using the screen. So we just did a crew report, and we just did a temperature scan, and the seismic scan gives us nothing. Pressure data gives us nothing. Oh, pressure data gives us a little bit, but the other experiments didn't really give us anything because we've already grabbed them. But it's still very interesting to see uh, this work. I was very happy with this. This was something that I was I was hoping would would be updated somehow, and I was pleasantly surprised when I found out that it was. Just adds it just adds to the realism of it. You know, I like the idea of putting a scientist in this seat and you know they can just run all the experiments as opposed to the pilot just pressing action group two, you know, and then action group three. So there we go, we are now departing Minmus. And after a short little freeze up, we uh, find ourselves back in the sphere of influence of Kerbin. There we go. Yep, and I try to use Astrogator to to plot a course for the Mun, but our inclination is way too funky, and we are not going to be able to just use our computer to go so we're going to use the the map screen and kind of twists our way into an encounter 
but none of the encounters we're getting are very good and we definitely can't uh, get to the altitude that we need to so we're gonna do a, a little course correction burn midway yeah after playing around with the nodes for a little while I'm just gonna give up on it and we'll we'll figure it out when we get there Yeah, as you can see, the inclination that I'm in is not ideal. But the good news is, is we have tons of delta v, so we can take we can take this and really mess with all the different options. doing a lot of finagling here. It it took a lot to to make this encounter. I don't typically go from min mist to the mun too, so I don't really have a solid strategy on the best way of doing it or the the most efficient route to plan it. Thankfully, I had more than enough delta v, so I could take whichever route uh worked the best. So yeah, so like I said, uh, this isn't the perfect encounter, but we will adjust it along the way. And once again back in the capsule, we are just waiting until time. We did forget to put a probe core on this, so we haven't been able to use flight computer this whole time. It's all been hands-on. And 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 7, 6, and it's close enough. So we just uh, time warp our way a little bit closer. We have a... Uh, our closest approach is higher than what we need to be for the contract, so we're going to just plot in a maneuver here to just bring down our apoapsis, or our periapsis, excuse me, just bring down our apsis, and uh, we plot it. And then hopefully after this maneuver, we will have completed the mission. And all we have to do is bring them home. Safely. Bring them home safely. So there we are. We time warp to the maneuver. And for the MUN, I believe our periapsis just needed to be below 60 kilometers. So we stop at 56.6. Well enough. Now we time warp until we're at the spot. And then we successfully complete the contract. We did, however, fail two of them, and that was because uh, the contracts expired by the time we had gotten to this point, uh, which isn't exactly fair because we had them loaded up into the craft and all this stuff, but apparently they were meant to come back home a lot sooner. Um, we thought about cheating this in, you know, doing the, the Alt F12, and fixing that contract and saying, you know, oh no, we did complete this, but uh, in the end we decided not to. 
We just kind of took that loss. But it's alright, we still have all the others. And we are now finally getting ready to ditch our lower stage. The stage that was just supposed to get us up into orbit and potentially change our inclination is now going to be the one that brings us home. Ready, three, two, one, stage. I said stage. You can do it. <laughs> there we go. It's always it's always a question when it freezes up like that. It's like, uh, did I do something wrong? Is my ship about to explode? And that's a fair question when you use TAC explosives. Each of the explosives only have a five second delay on it, just by standard and so I typically just leave it at that because the idea is that you'll be moving forward away from the debris anyways. That's always a concern. So now the Poodle engine is taking us in. It's uh, quite a slow engine, a low thrust to weight, so it's not the, the speediest return. But with a periapsis of 74 kilometers and a full tank of fuel, we are going to be able to circularize this fairly well. We have enough delta V to just circularize the planet, come back down to a 74 kilometer orbit, and that will get us a perfect angle of attack that we won't be screaming through the atmosphere and potentially explode all of our kerbals. Because once again, that's 23 lives that we cannot lose. So now we're going to just time warp forward. Again, we have to be very careful. We don't have flight computer on, so it's not going to automatically stop us. It's also not going to do the burn for us either. And with that we fire. But once again, like I said, it's a very uh, low thrust to weight. And so this burn itself, if you can see right there in the lower right hand corner of the screen, is going to take five and a half minutes. So I went ahead and made myself a cup of coffee. <laughs> I just let it run and uh, hoped that I made it back in time to shut off the engine when we needed to. But I'm going to go ahead and skip past that. We'll see you when, when we're done. There we go. We have circularized. Drop a little quick save. We look around and see uh, where the KSC is. And we're going to try to to land as close as possible to that. Sadly, however, I uh, was a little impatient and I decided to just make the first burn that came available to me. Uh, if I were to do this again, I would probably go around a few orbits, a few revolutions around the planet until the KSC was closer to the dawn side of the light as opposed to the dusk. But as it is currently, we are going to be landing in the darkness. Never a favorite, especially since we got to we lost a chance to look at more clouds. So now we are going to point orbital out. So that way we can detach our lower stage. And again, bunch of fuel that we ended up wasting with that. But let's you know, we we are going to be making a whole bunch of money with these tourists, so it, it makes up for it in the end. And so now we are physics warping because we are in the atmosphere. 
and very shortly we will be coming back down to the surface and we've got a 2.5 meter heat shield on this which is the exact size of our craft so hopefully nothing bad should happen to the jumbo kerbal cans they shouldn't overheat uh, and because the jumbo kerbal cans are in the way of the alcor pod hopefully that shouldn't overheat as well so now we're coming into the darkness and I was kicking myself I'm like would have been much better to land in light So the atmospheric heating effects are taken over. And just as predicted, our pod temperature is staying very low. We are not overheating at all. All of the Kerbals are waiting with held breath. been a, a long trip for all of them especially for the ones that only wanted to come up here for an hour just trying to hold the craft steady the uh, trajectory keeps straying from the retrograde marker so we have to Kind of finagle our way back in. Make sure that we don't start flipping or uh, developing too much heat on one side or another. And before you know it, the flames start to disappear. And we have uh, we have made our way through the toughest part of the atmosphere. We are coming down fast, but our parachutes deploy. We can hear them going. Our drug chutes, anyways. Now our parachutes, our main chutes, have popped open. And just take another quick look at our contracts, and yeah, you can see the two that were were failed right there. Even though we did complete them. It's just the fact that the the timer ran out. There is a mod that, that changes it so your contract can't uh, time out before it ends. And maybe we'll look into that at some point. It might be a little too cheap though. I think uh, having deadlines to contracts is realistic. But here it did it did kind of play to our disadvantage was disadvantageous for us but on the bright side we did also complete six other contracts so I would say that's a win but we'll just have to see how much money we make when we get back a little worrisome as we uh, get closer and closer to the surface the chutes still have not opened. And I'm starting to really freak out. But luckily, I hear the noise and that tells me the chutes open and I see our descent speed drastically lower. And once I see it fall down to a reasonable five meters per second, I know that we have successfully landed. Or successfully made it through the atmosphere. It's a good feeling. Everyone can can breathe a sigh of relief at that point.
And with that, our last set of parachutes deploy. The, the big three set from the real shoots mod. And that takes us down to our final speed. We are coming home. and contact. We splash down very safely, very softly. And we have successfully completed all those contracts. We will show it more in the next episode when we start actually building the space station, but we managed to bring our total funds to 1.9 million. And that is almost exactly how much we needed to create the space station itself. So I am very happy with how this worked out. And we didn't land too far away from KSC either, so we should be getting quite a good amount of money back for that. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. This is where I'm going to leave today's episode. We will be back with some KSP POV soon. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff to work on. We've got a full space station to build. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward to more. If you did, please consider giving me a like, drop me a comment, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.